This FizCast is about the first law of thermodynamics. Please pause the video and read through the question carefully. After reading through the question, you realise that it's in two parts. Part A is asking me how much heat is transferred to my container during the shaking process, and Part B is asking how much mechanical energy would be required had the container been perfectly insulating. We're given some information about this container. First of all, it has about one kilogram of water inside it. The container itself is uninsulated, which is important. This means that I can add heat to the water to raise its temperature, or I can take heat out of the water to lower its temperature. So I can change Q. I am shaking the container violently, so that means that I am doing some work on the container. That amount of work I'm given numerically is 22 kilojoules, and I'm told that the temperature of the water rises by 5 degrees Celsius above room temperature. Since the temperature has increased, that means there's been a change in the internal energy delta U. That amount of change in the internal energy I can understand as being proportional to the mass, the amount of water I've got, the specific heat of the water times its change in temperature. So one way I can change the internal energy is I could just add heat to the water. How much heat would I have to add in order to get that temperature change of 5 degrees Celsius? We could work out by knowing M, which is 1 kilogram, times 4184 joules, times T final minus T initial, which is going to be my 5 degrees Celsius. So that change in the internal energy would be uh, 20,920 joules. That's how much the internal energy has changed by. Now, this question is about the first law of thermodynamics because I can change the internal energy by either adding heat to my water or I can do work on my water. Both those things will change the internal energy here. Now, part A is asking us how much heat has been transferred during the shaking. So it's asking us what this quantity is here. So we can rearrange this to make that the subject. Q is going to be equal to my change in internal energy minus the work which is done on my water. The internal energy change was 20,920 joules. The work which has been done on my water by shaking it is 22 kilojoules or 22,000. So the heat Q which has been added to the liquid is negative 1,080 joules. So I should first of all ask myself what does this negative quantity mean? Well positive Q would mean that I'm adding energy into the water from heat and negative Q means I'm taking some energy out of the water. So heat's flowing from the hotter to the colder object. Does that make sense here? Well, when I shake it, it raises the internal temperature. That means that the water temperature is now above that of room temperature, so it's hotter than room temperature, and my container is uninsulating. That means that my hotter object can have heat, which flows from the hotter object, the water, to the room environment. We're just losing energy to the environment here. That's what the negative uh, number tells me. Part B is to ask how much mechanical energy would be required if the container had been perfectly insulating. So to have a perfectly insulating container, that tells me that I can neither add heat to my container or take away heat, lose heat from my container. So Q must be zero. Therefore, my change in internal energy would have to be equal to the work which is done on my water. That means that the mechanical energy I'd need to use would be 20,920 joules. So all of that mechanical energy would be just transformed into internal energy of the water, raising its temperature by 5 degrees, as given by what's happening over here. Does that make sense? Well, 
this amount of energy that I require, 20,920, is less than the 22,000 joules that I used previously because I was losing some heat to the environment, but now I'm not. So this is the minimum amount of energy required to raise that water by 5 degrees Celsius.